Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece, and today we have a fairly casual video just asking a chill and not at all important question, which is what is the One Piece? And to be perfectly honest, I'm actually half serious when I say that, because as much as this whole One Piece thing is the driving force of the series, its actual discovery isn't necessarily something that I personally look forward to, primarily because it well and truly signals the end of that thing I love so dearly, that thing being One Piece. But with that said, I do think it's very important to ask the question regardless, but instead of just rambling out of my own brain hole, this time around I've decided to ask the Grand Fleet members what they think the One Piece is, which got well over a thousand responses, so thank you all very much for that. And my thinking here is that it's kind of like gathering a bunch of monkeys in a room with typewriters. Given enough time, eventually one of them will assuredly type out exactly what the One Piece is, and I'm just going to hope that we found it here today. A bit of context before diving in though, because I think it is very important to note that whenever the One Piece is mentioned in Japanese, it is often a accompanied by additional text, describing it as Hitotsunagi, which can actually be read as three pretty radically different meanings. One being a more literal translation being one piece, as in one numerical piece of thing. However, another is a phrase that can mean a rope linking all men. Whilst the third is yet another phrase, meaning something along the lines of one sea at peace. All of which are fascinating and relevant to today's discussion. And I love that Japanese leaves ambiguity for meanings like this. It's not something that we could ever come to understand through English, but I do feel like it was very important to highlight before we got into things properly. So with that in mind, let's see what all of you have come up with. Starting with, I'm 100% sure it's access to press the subscribe button for the Grand Line Review, which would result in regular One Piece content being uploaded straight into your YouTube feed. Lucky Roger, may I say. And yes, you may say. But actually, I have to disagree with this theory, because if the One Piece was indeed the subscribe button for the Grand Line Review, then that would make it exceedingly difficult for all of you to, you know, press it. And yet, here it is, at your complete convenience. So go on, give it a press, and join the ever-growing Grand Fleet, a rope linking all people. But with that out of the way, let's get into some real answers. I think the One Piece stands for the One Piece of Missing History. It could be something written by Joy Boy explaining the Void Century, and the will slash people of D. All right, so I've heard this idea before in several different incarnations, but there is definitely a common train of thought that either Laugh Tale or the One Piece itself is going to be that final question mark answered. And I guess I do like the idea of the Void Century maybe being represented as the one piece of missing history, but at the same time, I'm not quite sold on it. If anything, I'd be more keen on the idea of the One Piece being a sort of bonus poneglyph, not one of the Rio poneglyphs that is meant to tell the lost history, but instead one that actually outlines the future, giving specifics about the return of Joy Boy, the Great Incoming War, and whatever other extraordinarily valuable information is required to give that final piece of context that Roger, Odin, and everyone else clearly did not have before setting foot on Laugh Tale. Then again, there's nothing to say that this and the One Piece necessarily have to be the same thing, which is a very important distinction made by our next comment. The One Piece have to be Roger's treasure that he collected during his time as a pirate, right? But I think Laugh Tale, Laugh Tale, where he left it might be the ruins of the ancient kingdom or something along those lines. Lines. And this thought is surprisingly uncommon, or at least uncommon in my anecdotal experience. But basically the idea is that Roger's One Piece might be different from what he and the Roger Pirates found on Laugh Tale. Something that Roger added himself, like a literal treasure, to be used as bait to eventually drive the right person to the island. At the same time, it's a much more simplistic thought that Roger just lied or was deliberately vague to the world regarding the concept of treasure. And I tend to lean towards the idea of Roger having named an already existing treasure as the One Piece, sort of like naming Laugh Tale. It just this feels like a much cleaner idea for whatever the One Piece is to be the ultimate wrap up of all of the things and questions and desires, somehow. I mean, that is a very big task for one treasure to accomplish. But then again, maybe the One Piece is an embarrassing picture of Gold Roger at the Christmas party. And look, I think that this theory is as solid as any we've gone into thus far. It certainly fulfills the criteria of Laugh Tale, and the Roger Pirates seem like the types to have gotten up to some fairly serious shenaniganry back in their day. And in all, or at least, some seriousness, I do think it would be quite charming for them to have left something like this behind. Like a photo of the entire crew on Laugh Tale to commemorate the occasion, that or Roger at the Christmas party, ideally wearing a one piece himself. Destroying the red line, especially the part around the Holy Land. Instead of being split in four, the world would be in one piece. Roll the credits, my work is done. That would in a way create the old blue, get rid of the Holy Land, let the laboon go, etc. And this is probably the idea that I take to the most. The thought that 
whatever the One Piece is, it currently doesn't actually exist and is instead a hint towards reuniting the world. And like the commenter said, it achieves an awful lot of things in one fell swoop. Tearing down the red line essentially creates the old blue, and it also implies the destruction of the Holy Land of Marijuana. But furthermore, it would also lead to the destruction of Fishman Island in theory, which was Madame Charlie's prediction, an event to be caused by a man in a dastardly straw hat. Which, you know, would prompt all of the citizens to board the nowhere and force everyone to live on the surface happily ever after. And as for how to achieve that, well, a series of ancient weapons should be able to do the trick pretty well, yeah? And I generally find that everything just lines up quite smoothly with this idea. So with that in mind, perhaps the treasure on Laugh Tale is a map of the ancient world without the red line splitting everything into what we know of as the world today. Although that does bring up the question of how the red line was created because, you know, it's not easy to make continents. Trust me, I've tried. But really there isn't a whole lot that contradicts this idea and in a weird way it also fulfills the wanky idea that the journey itself is the treasure. As it would turn out that the world Luffy thoroughly and adventurously explored is the one piece itself. Look, there's a lot of ways it could work. A devil fruit tree with a ton of treasure around it. See, so yeah, I'm not so sure about the whole devil fruit tree idea. On the one hand, it does make some sense because however devil fruits are created and cultivated, the greater world powers likely have no idea where such a thing is if something does indeed exist at all. And so it's a very easy answer to say that this tree is on Laugh Tail, an island that nobody can access. At the same time, if such thing does exist, it could also be on other isolated islands. I mean, taking Zo as an example, this place is practically as difficult to find as Laugh Tail itself, unless you accidentally stumble upon it or have a Vivia card pointing you in its general direction. There's also plenty of other isolationist nations out there like Elbaf, which could hold some juicy fruit related secrets. But yeah, I'm really not so on board with the idea of the One Piece being related to the secret of Devil Fruit Origins. To me, it feels like a very separate exploration, potentially through something more Vegapunk spearheaded. And also, as I keep saying, there's no guarantee that a tree even exists to begin with. That's just an assumption being made because of fruit. A dopey scarecrow that Luffy's hat belongs on. And I love this answer. I love it so much that I really, really want it to be real. And thus, when Luffy places his straw hat on the scarecrow, it will complete it, thus becoming the One Piece. In a weird tangent though, this clearly comical answer does bring up all of the thoughts about how Luffy's straw hat could somehow be some sort of key. So to use this, once again, clearly comical example, Luffy would place it on the scarecrow, which then activates something else leading to the actual treasure, which Roger maybe was not able to access because Shanks wasn't with him, and it all just ends up being very funny. Not hugely likely though, obviously, but it does bring the straw hat into technical relevance, although, I don't know, I kind of enjoy it as just a symbol of inherited will. In Germany, we have a saying, oh no, <laughs> der Weg ist das Ziel. Something like the path we choose is the goal, combined with a every choice you make will make you yourself. Wise words. So this leads back to former ideas and I guess I should apologize for my horrific German skills. I have brutalized your language with my horrendous tongue, but I do like the general sentiment. If not for One Piece, then just for everyday life. Because if One Piece has taught me anything, it's that it's a bit unnatural and annoying to be fixated on goals. And I know that's funny to say because Luffy is fixated on becoming the Pirate King, but he's also determined to do so in his own casual way. Not fulfilling any criteria or ticking any boxes. And I'll be completely honest, I don't even I think Luffy understands how to become the Pirate King. He's just going to keep being him until it happens. And so in conclusion, your goal and your path are not mutually exclusive. The goal is the path, and I would like to thank our German friend for sharing this philosophy. But now for something completely different. For some reason, I've always just imagined the One Piece as a big gold coin about the size of a CD. Can't explain why, but it seems funny to think all these pirates are just aiming to find a big coin. And now for those of you who don't know what a CD is, it was basically a bit of plastic that us old people used to use to listen to music through sorcery. And get this, most CDs were able to hold like 12 songs on them, which meant that we needed a lot of CDs. But this is also another comical idea that perhaps the fabled One Piece could be something as lackluster as say a single berry coin just sitting in the middle of some gigantic shrine. It doesn't necessarily fit well <laughs> anything, but I also can't say I'd be too disappointed to have the One Piece be something so utterly meaningless. It would kind of suit Oda's humor, although I can't say the same for the fan base at large. I'm sure minds would be lost. So let's put that thought to the side and maybe it's something more like everything the world has to offer, which is wealth, treasures, power, ancient weapons, knowledge, the truth of everything in the One Piece world and fame. 
becoming labeled as the Pirate King. And I do like this because it does tie the wealth, fame, power trifecta together in a perhaps satisfying way. If I'm interpreting this correctly, which I may not, I take it to imply that by the time you reach Laugh Tale and found the One Piece, then you would have already discovered 99% of what you need to achieve wealth, fame, and power. So take Luffy for example, we've more or less found two of the ancient weapons, so we're just one away from satisfying grand power. And in terms of wealth, well that should just come naturally with being a pirate successful enough to land on Laugh Tale in the first place, and it certainly will come if Nami has anything to do with it. And then yeah, the final piece would be fame, which you would already have a large degree of, but Laugh Tale would provide that final push of global recognition that no other figure could hope to achieve within your generation. Also known as becoming the Pirate King. With all of that said, it's a less tangible idea, which is why I doubt that Oda will go for it. It's a nice meta aspect, and I'm sure that people like me will argue over what the true One Piece is for years after we discover it. But all indicators, including statements made by Oda, do indicate that the One Piece will be an actual thing. Which brings us to this. It's a treasure chest that inside just says, One Piece will be on break next week. And you know what? That would have me laughing, or would it be crying? Yeah, actually, I think I'd be crying so hard that it would both look and sound like laughing. But just on this topic though, we can all imagine what the One Piece Discovery chapter is going to be like, right? So Luffy and the Straw Hats land at Laugh Tale, someone spots the One Piece, and the chapter ends with a reaction shot of Luffy, leaving us with the longest and most excruciating seven day wait of our lifetime. If if we're lucky that is, because if we're not, then the chapter is going to end with One Piece will be on break next week, and the next 14 days are going to be pretty rough to say the least. Pretty hype, but awfully long, and that is probably a great place to call this a day. So what do you guys think? Please do leave your thoughts in the comments below or even join my Discord server. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, then please do go and check out some of my other content or even subscribe to the channel for regular One Piece business uploaded straight into your YouTube feeds. But for now, this has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time.